to get started right here and today we're gonna talk about the Canon R3. A lot of people have been making videos but there hasn't been a lot said about these cameras, the feature that this camera, you know, is going to have. But before I continue, it's been what, like a month and change that I haven't posted a video, but I got my wife with COVID, my daughter with COVID, our nanny with COVID, a lot of people at work with COVID. Luckily, everyone is fine. I never got it. I don't know how I never got it, but that's the situation right now. So stay safe right there. But into this video, I wanna talk about the Canon R3 and I wanna talk about some of the features that Canon has in this close that I think this camera is gonna have and how the Canon R3 is going to be a complete direct threat to the uh, Sony A1, all that information coming right up. And welcome back to the channel, guys. Let's talk about some of the features that Canon did confirm. And the first one is going to be the sensor because we know that this camera, the R3, is gonna have a full frame CMOS stack sensor. And you know, by now we're all familiar with stacked uh, technology. You know, for example, the A9 and the A1 have a stack sensor, which allows the camera to have better dynamic range, you know, a faster readout of the sensor, better low light performance, and the list goes on. So Canon also has stated that this camera is gonna be able to shoot at 30 frames per second, all coincidence, you know, same speed as the uh, Sony A1. And this to me is just part of the indication that this camera is gonna be aimed to be a direct competitor to the Sony A1. Now the part that no one has talked about, Canon has not talked about, is, you know, the resolution of the sensor because, you know, it's obvious that this camera is a camera designed for photographers in mind first. But when it comes to sensor, they could actually go anyway. You know, they could go something in the 20-ish, you know, megapixel. They could actually match the same megapixel of the Sony A1, or, you know, they can even go even higher, you know, 65, 85, 100, whatever they want. But I think what they're gonna try to do in here is they're gonna try to play it safe and go with something uh, happy medium, such as the Sony A1 and maybe 45 or 50 megapixel. And the reason why I'm thinking this is because they are going to release the R1, you know, and the R1 is going to be their flagship camera. And if you go back in history, Canon has respected the way they named their cameras. So the smaller the number, the more powerful and the more expensive the camera is. So we have seen this, you know, throughout the whole history of Canon. However, in the same token, you know, Sony has claimed the flagship spot with the Sony A1. A, first letter of the alphabet, one, the first number, right? So I don't know what else they can do. Maybe Sony A 0.5, I don't think so. But by releasing this camera first, you know, it allows Canon to release the camera with exact or similar or even more powerful features than the Sony uh, A1. And I think this is a really good you know, spot to be for Canon because they can match up you know, the burst speed of the camera, they can match up you know, the uh, megapixel count resolution, but at the same time, they can introduce new technologies and this is what we're gonna be talking about next. So what kind of technologies, brand new technology we could see in the Canon R3? And in my opinion, one of the opportunities that I see right here is to design the very first professional body camera without a shutter, you know? Cameras with shutter exist, you know, since a while, you know, my camera on the phone doesn't have a shutter. A lot of the pocket cameras don't have shutters. And a lot of the professional cameras right now, they can shoot with a mix of mechanical shutter and electronic shutter. So if Canon has developed and, you know, researched so much this technology, maybe they're ready right now to introduce the very first, you know, shutterless camera. And this could actually lead room for other technologies that we haven't seen in still cameras. For example, maybe introducing the very first variable ND filter built in in the camera. And for the photography world, just like it is a big deal for the cinema world, you know, with the FX6, for example, which is a camera that has a feature and I cannot live without now, it could be actually a big pivoting point for a lot of people, you know, shifting eyes to Canon with a camera that has, you know, a variable internal ND filter. That would be amazing and sign me up if that's the case. Now, if you remember the Canon 3, you know, an older camera, an SLR camera, 
that camera had a feature that allowed you to move focusing points by utilizing your own eyes. So basically looking through the viewfinder and moving your eye around, you could actually track and move focusing points by the motion of your eye, you know? And at the time that didn't work very well, you know, the Canon 3 only had 45 or 40 uh, focusing points. And I have a friend that had one and told me that it just didn't work as well. But you know, a lot of years has gone by, technology has advanced so much that I think that Canon probably is in a position to also introduce this brand new feature in professional bodies. Now this one is gonna be more of a wish list uh, type of feature. And one of the things that I like about the One DX Mark III, although I don't own it, I tried it, is the additional joystick that you have in the camera that is now mechanical. So it's kind of like a digital little nipple that you rub with your fingers and you know it allows you to move your focus across the camera way faster than traditional joystick because you know it doesn't require the pressure of your thumb to actually uh, you know move the focusing point and it's easy to move the points in diagonals you know without having to go into that kind of like uh, rectilinear motion. So that could also be another feature to include in this camera. They already have it in the One, the XMAR 3 and you know, it could be something that uh, kind of may decide to, you know, putting cameras, you know, moving forward. I think that's gonna be a great call. Now, like I mentioned before, this camera is obviously a photography still camera first and Sony hasn't said much about video specs and probably because of good reasons, you know, look at what happened with the R5 announcement, but if you look at the body of this camera right now, it looks like, you know, a screen 1DX type of geometry, you know, much more compact. I really like the fact that we have it built in, you know, uh, for vertical and horizontal shooting. And also, you know, I'm assuming that we're gonna have a larger battery or maybe two batteries in the camera. So all that stuff is positive. Now, remember I said that this camera, in my opinion, is a direct competitor to the uh, A1. And when you think about the A1, if you wanna have, you know, longer battery life, or if you wanna have, you know, an additional grip, you do have to put the older grip from the A9, and once it's installed, it just doesn't look that nice. As some of you guys, you know, were able to tell already, you know, there are a lot of gaps, and it kinda of looks like it doesn't belong in the camera. So, for those that love that, you know, dual grip, you know, type of geometry, well, this camera seems to be delivering, you know, the design looks very appealing and I think it's the right direction to go moving forward. And I just mentioned that, you know, this camera is obviously a still camera first, but I don't think that Canon is gonna leave amazing video features out of this body because let's be honest, the A1 is a great still camera and it's a great video camera with incredible features. So I think that Canon has been playing it safe right here, you know, not wanting to talk much about video, but definitely this camera is gonna have some sort of AK video recording at least up to 30p. Obviously, we're gonna have 4K, you know, with all the frame rates, you know, higher frame rates up to 120 or maybe even more. And uh, I think this camera is also gonna be a great video camera. They're just trying to play it safe. Now, one thing that I wish they do in this release is that they remove that 30 minute, you know, recording limit, which is absurd in 2021 to even consider buying a camera, you know, without limitation, if you indeed are gonna be using the camera for both video and photography. And I think that we're gonna see in this one coming up. Now, the next piece of information that no one knows about, kinda has not disclosed anything in this presentation, is what is the camera gonna cost? And in my opinion, if this camera, which is not the flagship camera, obviously, because Canon has respect to the naming of their camera, well, they could probably price this camera under $6,500 because this is the price of the Sony A1. And the Sony A1, of course, you know, is the flagship, top of the line, you know, uh, Sony has actually claimed that spot with the naming of their camera, but Canon is in a really good position right now to actually price this camera whatever they want to steal a little bit of market share or to even uh, make the decision between these two cameras even easier. So I think that they're probably gonna price the camera under $6,000, somewhere around you know $5,999 or $5,400.99. And right there, that is a big gap in between the 6,500 and you know 5,400 dollars, and you know it's gonna make the decision factor a lot easier for a lot of people, especially if they introduce a lot of these new technologies that I'm guessing they could actually add in the camera. But what do you think? Drop your comments down below. Canon is also working on two brand new lenses for wildlife photography, sport photographers, and this one is the 400 and 600. F2.8, two prime lenses that most likely they're gonna be incredible. 
But the only thing is that I was a little bit bummed when I saw the pictures of how big these lenses are. And I know that lenses in this focal length, they tend to be very big. Uh, but you know, with the RF, that's 70 to 200 and the F2.8 and the F4 version, We've seen, you know, small lenses and the capability of the RF mount to design smaller lenses. This is something that Canon also stated many times over and over. But yes, still, we have lenses that are not much smaller than anything else that we have seen in such focal length. Maybe the pictures, you know, are not depicting the right size, but as for what I can see right now, it looks like those lenses are going to be massive. Also, let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Definitely a really nice time to be in history as a creator, you know, camera manufacturers pretty much throwing more and more innovation with every single release. It is clear that this is the world of Canon and Sony these days. So let me know what you think about the Canon R3, some of the features that you think the camera is going to have or what it may not have. What do you think about the pricing? And until then, guys, I will see you in the next video. Take care.